A young girl named Julie complained about the church constantly. She resented the fact that her parents made her come to Mass every Sunday, so she would be there um, not answering a prayer, not singing anything, just being very defiant. And then she was really angry because they forced her to go to religious education classes every week and be with the part of the youth group. When she'd go to youth group, she'd take a chair in the back of the room and she would just slouch down in it and look like she was totally bored and completely in uninterested. The day came when Julie was walking home on her way back from the library and she saw to her horror that there were fire engines in front of her house. The entire house was in flames and her mother and father were standing outside in front of it. Everything that they had in the house was totally destroyed. Julie now became even more angry. Well, about four or five days later, the kids in the youth group found out where Julie and her parents were staying. And so they went around and they took up a collection and asked people for help. And they went to visit them. And when they saw Julie, they said to her, we're so sorry for what happened to you. It must be very difficult. And they handed her an envelope and said, we just collected this because we wanted to help you maybe restore and replace some of the things that you lost. Julie was totally shocked. She thought later, I treated them with such disrespect and they came back and treated me with unconditional love. Her whole attitude towards the church and toward the community changed because now she felt that she was loved and she belonged. It was the ministry of presence that those young people gave that brought Judy back. There's another story about a, an elderly woman in Russia who lived there at a time when it was a crime to be um, practice your faith. And if you were caught doing so, you would be punished or put in prison. And so people had to be very careful. Julie, or I mean, uh, this woman from Russia was uh, was crippled. She was elderly and she was crippled from an illness she had. She only part of her body that functioned was her right hand. And she was spending all day long typing the Bible and other spiritual readings into Russian and so that they could be passed out to people in the community. She thought, they would never expect a crippled old lady to be doing anything against the government. And so all day long, she could do that. Again, it was a ministry that she could do. Instead of looking at her disability as something totally destroying her, she looked at it as something that she find a way that she could be positive and do something out of love for God. The commandments in the scriptures to the gospel today and in the first reading both remind us about the two greatest commandments, to love God above all things with your whole heart, soul, and mind, the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Those young people were loving their neighbor. She treated them badly, but they treated her back with love, and it changed her life. Those two commandments really embody all of the Ten Commandments, if you think about it. If we do those two things, love God first, and our neighbor is ourself. We're fulfilling the command of all the Ten Commandments of God. So it's important for us today to, to think about that in our own lives and to look for opportunities where we can minister. Matthew Kelly, in his, one of his writings, says that, that your presence is the first ministry. Just being present should be a ministry to others. And how important it is to think of that. There was a man named Ron who grew up with a mother who was very loving and kind and so forth, a great mother, but she was meticulous absolutely about her house. Everything had to be spotlessly clean. Everything had to always be in perfect order. And that's the way Ron grew up, learning that from his mother. But he grew up and he became a volunteer at a soup kitchen in the community. And one day he was there and they were serving chili and cornbread. And he served some to a, one of the poor men who came in. And then the man reached out his hand to shake Ron's hand. And he was a bit horrified because his hand was so dirty. 
but he still reached out and shook his hand. Well, the next person that came along to pick up the chili and cornbread, Ron was putting it in the bowl, and he spilled some of the chili on his right hand. And just instantaneously, he licked his hand to get the chili off. And then he was horrified. He thought he just licked the hand that shook that other man's very dirty hand. His antiseptic drug upbringing made him do that. But again, he thought also that it's so important that we give of ourselves, that we love back, that we don't, that we live unconditionally. And I thought about it yesterday because you all know Ron Klipchak, and this man's name was Ron. But I called Ron because um, I was having a problem. The air in my tires in my car was real low, you know, how it gets when the weather's cold. And they were all down to 22 pounds, it's supposed to be 34. And I thought, I have to drive to Immaculate Heart of Mary in Cuyahoga Falls today. And I thought, I better get the air in the tires. Well, it was so cold, and my arthritis in my hands was so bad, I couldn't even unscrew the, the caps off the tires to get the air in. So I went to Walmart and bought one of those pumps that you can pump up the air right in your garage, plug it in. And I called Ron and asked him if he'd come and help me. So he did, of course. And he put the thing all together, and it just wasn't putting air in the tires for some reason. And um, finally he said, I said, I have confessions in 20 minutes. So he said, well, let's just go over to the gas station. Well, it was pouring rain, and Ron was there getting soaked, putting all the air in my tires to bring them up to 34 pounds. And I thought later in the day as I was doing this homily, that's the Ron in my life, that he was Christ to me. Jesus was changing, was putting the air in my tires through Ron, his ministry of presence, and I was so grateful. I almost called him before he came because my hands were so bad I couldn't button my shirt. Things are happening. <laughs> um, but uh, again, sometimes we have to be the presence of someone, sometimes we have to receive it. And that's what the gospel is all about, living the commandment of love God and love your neighbor. And so let's look for opportunities this week where we can uh, show love for our neighbor. When I was in Walmart buying that air pump, the lady that checked it out for me was a real nice woman, very friendly, and there was nobody behind me, and, and she said, would you like to make a donation? And I said, to what? And she said, well, to Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital. And I said, oh, sure. And she said, would you give a dollar? I said, no, I'll give five dollars. And she, I said, it's a great hospital. Um, she said, oh, it really is. She said, the nurses and doctors take such wonderful care of babies and children. And she said, in fact, when she was born, that she was premature and she had a twin sister. They were both premature many years ago. She said, we each weighed six pounds, but we were in trouble because their mother had the RH factor with her blood. And in those days, now you just get a shot a couple months before the birth and you're fine. But back then, they had to change all the blood in the babies as soon as they were born. It's a very, very um, serious thing. And she said her mother told her about that later, and she was so grateful for the nurses and doctors that saved her life and her sister's life. And I said, well, I'm a priest, and I, I go there all the time, and I agree with you. The nurses and doctors there have a ministry of presence. They minister to their patients. And... Um, so it's just another thing that happened where I thought here was a stranger who related to me how grateful she was because some nurses and doctors reached out to her when she was born. I could go on with so many stories, and we can all give them too. Think of instances where Christ was there for us through someone else, and times when you were there for Christ through someone else, through yourself for someone else. The um, this is Priesthood Sunday. And nationally, in the whole country, we're giving thanks to God and all the Catholic churches for the gift of the priesthood. The priesthood is a great gift to us because it's Christ in the priest who gives us his body and blood in the Eucharist, who celebrates the sacraments for us. And it's such a great gift. On the front of the bulletin today is a picture of me holding a baby. That was taken October the 1st here at St. Pat's when I was baptizing my newest great-nephew at the time, little Cameron. He was perfect during the baptism. Of course, he was my nephew, so. 
Um, he didn't cry or fuss or anything. And just kept looking at me like he knew everything I was saying. But um, looking at the picture and holding the baby, I thought, I can do something as a priest for these babies that will last for all eternity. They're given the gift of sanctifying grace. They're given the gifts of faith, hope, and love to become members of Christ and heirs to the kingdom of heaven. And what a great thing that is. And it all comes through the ministry of priesthood. So we give thanks today, and in the bulletin last week, we saw the pictures of all of our seminarians. Please pray for them, that they may persevere in their calling to the priesthood. And pray for all the priests, too, that we persevere, who are more at the end of our ministry. Pray for them at the beginning of their ministry. And God will continue to bless us through his church and through the sacraments. So we have much to be grateful for, and today we... Um, Ask God to help us remember to love him above all things, our neighbor as ourself, and look for opportunities this week. Someone at work, someone in a neighbor, whoever it might be, to compliment them, encourage them, or whatever it might be, help you can give, because you will be Christ to them.